Okay, so as we've been doing for pretty much every Wednesday of the last few months, Robert, going through, yes. May I make a suggestion or sure. say something? Okay, so I think it'd be nice, like, you know how Neil has like the uh, every Thursday he does the interview, or if there's like people, no one on the open mic, then maybe, uh, and you play some of the Neil stuff, maybe you could play some of my very 21 points. Because those are too. good stuff, I sure. think. Yeah. I think it's a great idea. Yeah. Great idea. I just got to find out where these recordings are. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Step one. All right. So we've been going through the 21 point sales system of the Mike Ferry 21 point sales system. We are up to point 17. So we're coming to an end of this. And point 17 is mindset. Now, I may <laughs> break this up in two different classes. So we might do mindset this week and next week because there's just so many points and so many things to talk about when it comes to mindset. And one of the things that's really important in terms of mindset in my mind, and same thing with Mike is thinking big. So I might do today mindset, just typical mindset. And then next week, part two, which is mindset slash thinking big, because it's just, I don't think I'm going to get through all this in the next half hour. I know I won't get through all that in the next half hour. Okay. So Let's talk about mindset. So as always, I have a list of points here. Some of these you've heard before, some of these you haven't. Some of these you've heard before, but maybe this is a good reminder or just, you know what, the first time you heard it wasn't that big of a deal. And for some reason it's hitting you today, right? You decide what's best for you. So let's jump into this mindset. Number one point on mindset is an Earl Nightingale quote. You become what you think about most of the time. Point number one on mindset, Earl Nightingale quote, you become what you think about most of the time. So if we're thinking about the plans that we have and we keep those plans foremost in our minds, we are setting ourselves up for positive results. If what Earl Nightingale says is true, you become what you think about most of the time. If we apply that logic to our business and we think about the plans, the business plans that we have that some of you hopefully have filled out and one day, not today or maybe tomorrow, next week, but one day, many years from now, we'll send them to me. If you're thinking about the plans that you have and you keep those plans in your mind, become what you think about most of it, you become what you think about most of the time, you're setting yourself up for positive results. Okay. But the important part of that is you have to keep this stuff in your mind at all times. One of the ways you could do that is you have to keep it in front of you at all times. Because you do become what you think about most of the time, but a lot of the time what you think about is what's in front of you. <clears throat> so give you an example. If you were sitting at your desk and all, and all I did was put a picture of an in and out double double in front of you just all day long at some point would you get craving for an in and out double double right that's what advertising is that's what advertisers do hey i'm just going to put this picture of this clydesdale in front of you with a budweiser emblem on it and it's just going to be in front of you all the time you're watching TV and eventually you're going to go, that hey, beer looks pretty good. That's advertising. <clears throat> it's the same concept here. You are creating your own advertising in your mind. So if you're looking, <clears throat> if all you're doing, for example, is looking at social media of some capacity, Facebook, and you're looking at all the negative crap that people talk about on a regular basis, your mindset becomes very negative because all you're thinking about is what you're seeing all the time, which is negativity, negativity, negativity. Oh, this person's this, and this person's that, and this politician, and this party, and this and that, and wah. <laughs> Good God. If, but if that's all you're doing, then that's your mindset. Just the same, same concept with the cheeseburger. I put the cheeseburger in front of you. 
So use that from a different thought of if I keep my business plan in front of me all the time, if I keep my goals in front of me all the time, then that's what I think about most. So it's not good enough to just write the business plan and put it away. It has to be in front of you. The goals have to be in front of you is the key to the mindset, positive mindset. You will accomplish more about what you're thinking about, but in order to get what you're thinking about in the right place, it has to be in front of you. <clears throat> Point number two is a Napoleon Hill, Napo Napoleon Hill, not heel, Napoleon Hill quote, what the mind of man can conceive and believe they can achieve. What the mind of man can conceive and believe they can achieve. So part of mindset is thinking big. Mike Ferry would say thinking big is a major issue in growing to 100 transactions per year. You have to close your eyes and visualize yourself doing this type of business. What the mind can conceive and believe it can achieve. Because if you don't think you can, if you don't believe in here, you won't achieve it out there. Just is what it is. Just like that Henry Ford quote, if you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. Well, Robert, there's no way I can do 20 transactions this year. You're right. Well, why would you say that to me? You said it to yourself. <laughs> you, get, you can't get mad at me for agreeing with you. Robert, damn it, I think I can do 30 transactions this year. I think you can do too. Let's put the plan together. Let's do it. But if you don't have it in here, there's no chance. One of the best examples, and again, I apologize, you know me, I use a lot of sports analogies. One of the best examples of that was Mike Tyson. Some of you don't know this, but Mike Tyson used to be a professional boxer, not an actor or a owner of a giant weed farm. Okay, some of you don't know that. You're like, oh, the guy from The Hangover? Yeah, the guy from The Hangover. But at one point in the 80s, he was labeled the baddest man on the planet. And he won, and he admitted to this, and people he thought even admitted to this, he won most of the fights before the fight even started because he walked to the ring, and his mindset was, I don't care who's in front of me. I'm knocking them out in 90 seconds. And the problem with the person on the other side of the ring was, He's going to knock me out in 90 seconds. The mind, before the fight even started, the fight was over because his mind was, I'm going right at you. I can do this. And their mind was, there's no way I can beat this guy. And, and if you watch some of his fights, some of the punches that ended up knocking people out, he didn't even really land. The fight was over. Now, some of them he did, and it was pretty brutal. But it was, it was just a mindset thing with the mind of man can conceive and believe they can achieve. Okay. So you have to close your eyes and vision yourself doing the type of business that you want to do, which involves sometimes thinking big. Okay. We're going to get more into thinking big later. I wrote down here a mindset, always be honest with yourself. So you know where your skills are. So you can develop the mental strength to win daily. Always be honest with yourself. So you know, are so you can develop strength to win daily see sometimes here's the problem on this point right here always be honest with yourself so you know where your skills are there's a there's a line a sales cliche and those of you who know me know i hate sales cliches and one of the sales cliches out there is fake it till you make it just fake it till you make it that is stupid. And I'm sorry, some of you might not agree with me, but it's stupid. Because if you, if you fake it, there's a chance you start to believe your fakeness and you're not really going to get any better. Oh, Robert, I, I really do believe, you know, I'm, 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 the, I'm very skilled. I am the best listening agent out there. And then you start to believe that without actually working on your skills. And then you never become an agent. <clears throat> So instead of faking it till you make it, just make it. Because your mind can sometimes believe the lie. So you always have to be honest with yourself so you know where your skills really are. And then you develop the mental strength to win daily. 
Now you have to be honest, but, but honesty doesn't mean go into like a deep, a deep depression or a deep, um, bad feeling about yourself. Well, God, I am being honest. I stink at my listing presentation. God, I'm awful. I'm terrible. I'm never going to do any good. No, no, no. That's not what I'm talking about. It's like, gosh, I'm not very good at my listing presentation. I got to develop mental strength to win daily. I got to go out there and get really good at it. But be honest with yourself so you know where your skills are. Okay. All right. Next point I wrote down here. Remember that your ego will not only ruin your business, but it will keep you from following your daily plan. Your ego will not only ruin your business, it'll keep you from following your daily plan. It's one of the biggest issues with mindset is the ego. And as Neil Schwartz would say, although he stole it from Gailey Weinberg, fair and square, your ego is not your amigo. No one says we can't get bilingual around here. Your ego is not your amigo. <laughs> Pretty snazzy, huh? But it'll ruin your business. Because when the ego gets so big, it fills up the mind and there's nothing else that can fit in there. It's like filling up your backpack with a bunch of crap. And then it's like, oh my gosh, well, I forgot the necessities. <laughs> I don't have any space. That's what the ego does to the mind. Fills up your mind so you don't have any good stuff, the necessary stuff to fill in for a positive mindset. Your business is ruined. So you have to keep your ego out of it. Now, let me ask you a question. You don't have to unmute yourself, but think about this. Do you know somebody who has more money than you do? Okay. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Okay. Do you know somebody that has been in, in the business longer and more successful than you? Yes. The dog knows. Oops, sorry. <laughs> yes. Okay. So, therefore, eliminating your ego should be pretty easy. Okay. There's somebody richer. There's somebody more successful. Okay. There might be other things that you want to accomplish that someone else is really good at. It is what it is. Eliminate your ego and go after the people that are always better than you. Always strive to go forward. That's why the, there's that line that says, if you're the smartest and richest person in your friends group, you need new friends. I am lucky that I will never be the smartest. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm always in a good, good company. <laughs> All right, there you go. I wrote down here next on mindset, negative thinking is more powerful than positive thinking. Would you agree? Would you agree that negative thinking is more powerful than positive thinking? Yes. No. Yes. Yep. hundred percent. And do people dwell let me ask you this. Do people talk more about the negative stuff or the positive stuff? The negative. Negative stuff. So you have to, from a mindset standpoint, you have to limit the, eliminate the negative. Eliminate the negative thinking. So give you an example. Has anyone ever had the, a thought pop in their head saying, there's no way I can do that? Anyone? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So the next time that happens, stop, 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 stop. It's not, I can't do it. It's how can I do it? You got to stop it. Mike does this all the time. He's talked about this before. You control the first thought that comes to your head. You can't control the first thought that comes in your head. What you can control is every thought thereafter and what you do with that first thought. So, First thought that comes in the head typically is negative about the situation. You can't control that. That's just the way it goes. What you can control is, okay, stop, no more. Move on. And then you can control the next thought of, okay, how can I get better? How can I do this? But if you let the first thought come in, it's negative, and then you dwell on it, which is what most people do, then it expands to something bigger and then becomes out of control faster. And then the mind is... 
warped. But this is an important thought regarding mindset because we're like, oh, well, how do we, you know, how, how do we constantly think positive? Sometimes you can't control the first thought. But the second, third, fourth, fifth, that's what you can control. Do I tend to seem like a very positive person? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Cindy said. <laughs> Well, to be fair, Cindy saw me get pretty irritated on Friday. So, uh, so she's got a, she's got a fresh thought in her mind of me being annoyed on Friday. So, uh, but the point, the point is I tend to be a fairly positive person. Well, oh, oh, Robert, so positive. How do you stay so positive? I go through the same stuff you do. I go through the same crap on a regular basis, sometimes more. Okay. But it's, it's, it's all about, okay, yeah, this happens. You deal with it. You move on. I got to keep moving on. I got to keep going. I can't let this negativity get me. My power it here's my superpower. And you always ask my, the superpower, my superpower is my, there's no way you can break my positivity. There's no way you can do it. You have to develop that same mindset and not let the negativity run your life. That's huge, Robert. Yeah. You have to, especially in today's world, because it's just getting worse. It's, I mean, it's worse. Somebody asked me the question the other day. So I haven't been on Instagram in like three or four months, right? Somebody asked me the other day, like, oh, you know, it's, um, you know, I just noticed you haven't been on there in a long time. Like, yeah. Well, why not? I don't care. I don't want to hear crap. Robert, do you have a Facebook account? No. Why? I don't need it. I don't want to hear crap. I pick and choose what I listen to. That's why I do YouTube. Because I can pick and choose what I want to listen to. I don't have to hear other people vent. I don't have to hear all this other stuff. I don't have to see these posts of negativity. Oh, it's bad in the world today for you. Not for me. So therefore, I don't want to be involved with your pity party. Now, some of you might be upset with me saying that, like, wow, Robert, that's kind of rude. People are really going through some stuff. And I'm not discounting the people that are going through some stuff. But the amount of people really going through stuff is this big. This big of people are really going through stuff. This big of people that are pretending to go through stuff. I just lost somebody because I was at 36, I lost 35. I pissed someone off so bad they left. I knew that was going to happen at least once today. <laughs> but it's the truth. You can't get involved with this stuff. There's a small percentage of people are really going through something. The rest are just pretending. They're just living in negativity. you got to block that crap out. And if you are going through something, I'm not picking on you. I feel bad for you. You're in that small group. But a lot of people are not. They're just pretending to be. You want to improve your mindset. You need to improve the people you're around. You need to improve the people you're following on social media. You need to improve the friends that you're with. You need to improve the people in your mastermind. You need to improve the people in your family that you talk to. You need to improve the people you're following. You need to improve all these other different things. If you want to have a positive mindset, if you want to achieve a lot, you need to improve all those types of things. Well, Robert, you said improve the people in your family that you talk to. You're damn right. Well, how do you do that? You find the people that are negative and bring you down and you stop talking to them. That with family? Yes. I have one brother and one sister. Neither of them were at my wedding because they weren't invited. That's a true story. I just had a baby girl. My brother doesn't even know she exists. 
by my choice. Sisters never met her. My choice. Because they're negative, nasty people, and I don't want them in my life. Brother, sister, don't care. My mom has four other siblings. All live in Southern California. I haven't seen any of them in 25 years. Because one day we were coming home from a holiday and I told my parents, I said, I'm never going around those people ever again. They're negative. They're nasty. I don't want to deal with them. And God bless my father for saying, I've been waiting for somebody to say that. I don't want to be around them either. You get so wrapped up in the, oh, but they're family. That's crap. God, I'm just irritated all kinds of people today. But I'm helping you. I'm here to help. And the mindset is such a big thing. And this is probably my most passionate topic because I have, in my mind, a totally unbreakable mindset. And I see so many people victim of their success because of a poor mindset. And it's mainly because they let other people infiltrate their dreams. You have got to stop doing that. Now, look, if you have a 12-year-old daughter, you can't kick them out. Okay, so there are some rules here. <laughs> okay, you can't go home and tell your eight-year-old, hey, look, it's been real. But, you know, your negativity is just draining me. And my coach told me that I got to eliminate. Okay, you got to, <laughs> okay, you got to. Some have some reason here. I'm telling you, man. I'm telling some of you have friends that you've been friends with for 25, 30 years that are bringing you down. Well, Robert, how do you tell a friend for 25, 30 years that you don't want to be friends with them anymore? You don't tell them you don't want to be friends with them anymore. You just stop communicating with them, stop inviting them over to watch the game, stop inviting them to lunch, to dinner. Robert, don't you think that once you're on that path of passion towards, you know, single mindedness and, and you really have that great goal in mind, you don't have to say anything to anybody. They don't want to be around you. That's also it, true. It is a it, it's like those black and white. Oh, I'm showing my age, but they used to have those little black and white dogs and they, they had a magnet on them and it if it was white on white it, or black on white, it, it went together. But if it was the opposite, and I'm not being racist, uh, but I mean, it was just like a, 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 an equal an equal sense that there's no way that they want to be around you either. Right. That's true. And so then the question becomes, everybody has their own path. So let them go. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. There you go. It's a great point. It's a great point, Dave. When you, when you set up that goal, set up those things in your mind, you tend to attract people that have that same goal. And then you tend to detract people that don't, but it's, you have to be careful of who you're surrounding yourself with, not just in person, but who you're reading, who you're following all this other different stuff. I tell you, man, that stuff online is the most toxic thing you could possibly do with your day. Just city getting caught up in all this vaccine stuff getting caught up in politics stuff is stupid it's draining and 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 it's draining it's dumb and then we go well oh yeah but i also want to close 50 deals Uh uh-huh how can you do that when you're sitting here arguing with someone on twitter that you've never met about politics in california The Democrats going to win. Okay. So I never understand why people in California should about Paul blows my mind. It's nuts. Protect yourself, protect your mind. Okay. I wrote down here. Why is it that we have the most secure alarm systems for our home, but no alarm system for our dreams? Why do we have the most secure locks? Who (laughs) is a Jerry Seinfeld joke, right? You go to the gym and you have a locker 
and you put all your, your workout clothes in the locker and you put this padlock on it that like no one can penetrate. You need like the jaws of life, these unbelievable things to unlock because we're so protected of our stinky gym clothes. But we have no locks, no locks on our dreams, no locks on our goals. We'll let anybody in there. I'll protect the house, but I won't protect my mind. And if I don't protect my mind, I'm not going to have the house. You have got to put a security system on your mind, on your head, on your dreams, on your goals. You cannot, with the most secure code, the most secure lock ever created, that's what you need on your mindset so nobody can get in. They're trying to crack the code and they can't. They can't get in. You want the big house? You want the nice car? You want the boat? You want the vacations? That's the security system you need. You got to create that security system. I wrote down here next on mindset, we must develop an unwavering desire to achieve our business goals in spite of the daily ups and downs we will encounter. We must develop an unwavering desire to achieve our business goals. We must develop an unwavering desire to achieve our business goals in spite of the daily ups and downs we will encounter. In real estate, do we have ups and downs? Sometimes by the minute. Robert, I just got off a really great call. I set an appointment. Yeah. One minute later, Robert, that guy told me to F off. All right. Good times. <laughs> minute by minute. Next minute. Robert, I got, a, I got a, a deal that's falling across. They're not falling apart. The lender's not giving them approval. Oh my gosh. This has been an amazing half hour. ups and downs of real estate, right? But you have to have an unwavering desire to achieve your business goals in spite of the daily ups and downs. You're going to have ups and downs. You can't let it get to you. I wrote down here next, answer the following questions to determine the strength of your mindset. Answer the following questions to determine the strength of your mindset. Three questions. Answer the following questions to determine the strength of your mindset. Question number one. What drives me the most and why? What drives me the most and why? Number two, what is my real motivation for being in this business? And number three, what is holding me back? What you'll find with those three is for some of you, how nonsensical the answers make what here's what i mean what drives me the most and why oh well what drives me is my kids i want to make sure that they don't have any student debt and that they have all kinds of money and all this and this what's my real motivation for being in the business freedom and flexibility of my schedule what so what drives you the most is you want to support your kids but what drives you the most in this business is that you can take time off whenever you want it's funny. It doesn't make any sense, does it? Well, what's holding me back? C point number two, <laughs> that I'm in this business for freedom and flexibility. All right? You have to develop the mindset in real estate that this is not a freedom and flexibility business. This is a CEO Fortune 500 type of business. You have to develop the mindset that this is not a freedom and flexibility business. This is a Fortune 500 CEO type of business. See, the problem with most real estate agents is the mindset is that I got into real estate for freedom and flexibility, which is what I call the two F words of real estate. Freedom and flexibility. You have to develop a mindset that I'm in real estate because I have a chance to make a fortune without getting my hands dirty. I have a chance to make a fortune without getting on a roof, without digging a ditch. 
I have a chance to make a fortune without going and in, running into a fire. I have a chance to make a fortune doing that. But if I look at it as I'm in this business because freedom and flexibility, I can take off whenever I want. I can leave whenever I want. I can start my day whenever I want. You will be free from income and you will have tons of flexibility on your schedule because you have nothing to do. But you have to shift the mindset. This is what separates real estate agents from business people. Right. Wrote down here next, we must have a thorough understanding of both personal and business accountability to be mentally tough. You must have a thorough understanding of both personal and business ability to be mentally tough. You have to have accountability and you have to be willing to accept accountability. It's a part of the gig. It's part of the gig. Those with weak mindsets can't take criticism. Those with good mindsets can take it. And I'm not talking about the mean criticism. Nobody should have to take abusive criticism, coaching criticism, constructive criticism. Strong mindset people don't have, don't have to worry about that kind of stuff. The weak-minded people get offended. They're the people that go, Robert, I want you to coach me the same way you coach Jack. No, you don't. Robert, I want you to coach me the same way you coach Jack. No, you don't. Robert, I want you to coach me the same way you coach Jack. Okay. Next week they leave. Well, why'd they leave? They told me to coach them the same way I coach Jack. <laughs> what do you want? So when Jack doesn't do something, I get permission to tell Jack, Jack, come on. And he goes, you're right. I say that to other people. What are you doing? Come on. And then Cindy gets an email that they transferred their license. Mindset. You must understand both personal and business accountability, ability, mentally tough. I'm not doing anything to be mean. It's not my nature. But Robert, I take Robert, it. Do you, if you think, if you think for one second that Mike Ferry doesn't get on my butt about things, you are out of your mind. See, you think, oh, yeah, Robert, he's just holding us accountable. He's being tough on us. Look at him all high and mighty. Yeah. Take half some of the calls that I have to have with Mr. Mike Ferry. Some of the emails I get from him. You think I'm tough on you. <laughs> you think I'm tough on you. Yes, Valerie, go ahead. Oh, it's just, can you just read that first sentence? Thorough understanding of. Both personal and business accountability to oh. be mentally tough. Okay. Questions on anything I've gone over so far? We love you, Robert. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I try. I try. There's a small percentage of people that feel the same way and a large percentage of people that don't, but that's okay. This is one of your best. Oh, all right. Yay. Well, then I'm going to end. I'm going to end. Luckily, it's one o'clock. All right. So I knew I wasn't going to get through all of mindset today. So I'm going to do it again next week. Part two is going to be, and my next note is actually on thinking big. So thinking big part of the mindset. So next week we'll do mindset again, part two slash thinking big. And we'll get a lot of good stuff going on there. So there you go. But I'm telling you.